All right. Welcome to episode nine of Limprovising or Improvising on the Instrument. So um, thus far, we've um, done, you know, we, we've looked at the uh, chords in the major scale. Um, we've looked at the major scale itself. We've looked at uh, the major pentatonic scale. And we've been working uh, mostly um, within sort of this box here, which goes from this C. You can see the lighter notes are the Cs, which goes from this C up to this C, like this. That is the scale, and we've been doing the chord from the scale, which is a C major, you know, D minor, E minor, etc. You should all know all that at this point. So now we're going to take a broader look and look at different sort of roadmaps um, that are available on the instrument. One of the things that I found um, a little bit confusing when I first started playing the instrument, even though I played a tiny bit of guitar at that point, um, was the way that, um, you know, there were so many note options available. So if you play this note, it's the same note as up here, as you can see in these uh, red notes, it's the exact same note. So there's sort of an extra dimensionality to it where each sort of octave is layered in a staggered way over the next one. And that can be a little bit confusing, but it can also give an amazing amount of opportunities for different ways, different approaches, different pathways of playing things. So um, first of all, um, so we're going to, again, cover a lot of ground this session. Hopefully somebody out there may be nice enough to do sort of those table of content things. We have links. It's just right now I'm, I'm not doing those. If somebody wants to volunteer to do one for this, that'd be great. But anyway, we're going to do uh, go over a lot of material. The first thing I want to uh, talk about today is a concept um, before we get to sort of more of the roadmaps is the concept of um, uh, inversions. And what is an inversion? Um, so uh, if you play the C chord the way we've been playing it, which is this note, this note, and that note. So, and again, if you can't see what's under my fingers, you can look down and see that, see what notes I'm playing either up here or down here. So there, there you have that. That's, um, that's uh, the C major chord, the way we've been playing it. Now, it's the low note and that is C. The middle note is in terms of uh, how high the pitch is. Now, you don't have to start on the C to play a C chord. You could say start on the E, and instead of having the uh, bottom note, uh, the C, that would be the top note instead. So you could play it like this. So um, that's what's called the first inversion of, um, of C. So there's... That's, that's, that's the C, that's the first inversion. And what would the second version, inversion be? If you don't know, you may have guessed already, it would be starting on the, the um, G note, the five, fifth degree of the scale or the chord there. Um, and how do you do that? Well, uh, you might do it like this. So you'd go, you'd have the, um, uh, now we're gonna sort of move out of the box anyway. Oh, we could still be thinking about this box here where you put the, um, the uh, fifth, uh, the fifth uh, on the bottom, and then like that. So that's the second inversion of this um, major chord. So again, it's, that's the, um, the chord in, in, in root position. This is the first inversion with the third on the bottom, and that is the uh, second version. Now, one of the things that makes the instrument, um, you know, incredibly versatile is you really can play these in any number of ways. On a guitar, you can't because, you know, if you play, say, this note and that note, you can't, you can't play those notes at the same time because um, they're on the same string. But here you can. So it en enables you to do different things. So in other words, say you wanted to play this a different way, you could play it like this. So that's the first inversion like that. You could play it and move like that. So... But we're going to stick, and generally, I think it's just easier to think about um, the shapes for the inversions um, like this. That's one inversion, and that's the second inversion. Sort of think them always like that. And that's how they are on, um, on the first four strings of guitar, um, the bottom four strings anyway, uh, from the low E to the high E. Um, that's what the inversions look like on guitar. Um, 
although the uh, the first um, on guitar, the C would be played, the root position C is played like this essentially because you know if you play it um, the way we've been playing it like this, these two notes on guitar you couldn't do. Um, so on guitar, the C, um, the C shape would be like this. Um, and that brings us to another another idea. Um, so you can see you can play you can play um, C like this. You can play the we the way we've been playing it, and you could also play it like this. So instead of going up to the G up here, you could put the G over here and play it like that. So these are all playing the exact same notes in terms of how they sound. Whoops, sorry. What, what am I doing here? Um, so that's the C, that the exact same sound you can hear. Um, but they're different shapes. Now that brings us to something uh, that I have found a way to sort of simplify the way I think about the layout of the Lindstrom. And I've also been using it um, with the way I tune guitar now, which is in fourths just like the Lindstrom. Um, and it really uh, makes, um, you know, sort of open things, opens things up. And it's based on the idea that essentially um, you can look at the Lindstrom like wherever you are um, and there being three pathways of approach. And what do I mean by that? So let's go back to those chords. Um, you could play the C chord like this. So that would be sort of going to the left, essentially. You could play it like this, which we're going to call sort of center approach here. We're going to play it the way we've been doing it. Uh, the right, also, we could do the right approach. So this is the way we've been doing it. And we could also call that going right. And so this is going center and this is going left. Um, now, that establishes um, approaches for doing scales and doing chords and how they relate to each other. So but by that, I mean, on the um, the way we've been doing it, we've been, you know, the, the scale is like this. Right. But we could start and go sort of in, in base our scale on this chord, which is these three notes again on the same chord, but the different shape. And we could um, play the scale like this. I'm going to do it with those fingers I'm trying to do. Uh, whoops, sorry. So that would be a second way to do it, which would sort of be the center approach using that. And then let's let's go to the left. Um, so again, this is the right approach. This is the center approach. And this is the left approach. So all these you may notice um, I'm playing um, usually three notes on a row. This um, on the um, on the center and the left ones we start uh, with one on the bottom and and then and then oh actually on the on the center one we play two and then go up to three. And on this one, we play one and then go up to three. But it's basically the idea on guitar, it's three notes a string, uh, three notes per string approach. Um, this is mainly how I conceptualize things is using um, three notes um, per row. Um, so again, the left scale would be like this. The center scale would be like this. And the right scale is the one we've been doing would be like this. All right. And now what's interesting, you can combine them and have scales that really uh, move up and down the whole instrument. So what do I mean? Say you um, start with the right approach. Okay. Now you're in the center. You can use this. You can go right into the center approach. And then right here, you can go, uh, you can go for the left approach. Oops. So here we go. So anyway, get the idea. You know, so in, in other words, the, um, the center goes, I mean, the, um, the right approach comes into the center approach, which comes into the left approach. All right. So um, that you can uh, that really um, may, means that wherever you are, 
you always have an ergonomic sort of approach for the next thing you want to play. And we'll talk about this as time goes on. But um, in addition to thinking about scales this way, you can think about, obviously, the chords within the scales this way. So in other words, um, in, uh, in the uh, right approach, we were, we were going, you know, that's, um, that's how you play um, the, uh, the main chord, C. And then you go D minor. Um, that's uh, that's uh, E minor, and then F major, um, G major, A minor, B diminished, up to C. Okay, but you can also you can you can uh, use slightly different variations on the chords to do the center. So in this one, you're starting with with that with that center um, version of C. And then you go over to a left chord version of, um, of D minor. And then keeping with the scale, which then goes up here with this shape, with the center shape, which then goes up here, you do the, the center version of, um, I mean the right version rather, of, uh, of the E minor. And then you go into the center version of, um, of F major. And then the left version of uh, G uh, G major. So see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm just using different shapes going up, but hitting the same note. So again, um, on the, say the first three on, um, on the, the right approach would be like this. And the center would be like this. And what would the left be? It would be So again, the, the left would be, so we're, we're moving the first chord to the left. And then, they remember the scale is, so we play, then the next, the next scale tone is the D, and then we do the D minor chord, the, the right version of the D minor chord. Then we go to the center version of the, of the uh, D minor chord. And then we would go to the left version of the, F major chord, and then on up the uh, right version of the G chord, the center version of the A minor chord, the um, left version of the B diminished, and then up to the back to the um, you know uh, main version of the uh, of the right version of the C chord. So hopefully this is all making sense. Um, again, there are three pathways: one where you think about everything sort of to the right of the first note, which would be, the, the scale would be this. The second would be sort of going up center. And the third version is going left. And similarly, each chord has a right, a left, and a center version. So just to stay on C, it would be that would be the that's the that's the right version. The center version is this C major, and the left version is this. And you could do the same thing if say you wanted to do C minor in this. We've been staying in C major, but say you wanted to do C minor, that would be the right version of C minor. This would be the center version of C minor. And then what would the left version be? obviously this. So um, every chord you can think about has those um, sort of three different orientations. Every every triad is what they call these uh, kinds of chords or triads. Every triad has, uh, has, a, has a left, a center, and a right orientation, as do the scales. So uh, one more time, the right scale, a major scale, the center um, major scale, and the left major scale. And then you can again combine them. Right, center, left. Okay, so um, that right there is a lot of stuff and you wanna get used to being able to sort of quickly, um, you know, move between chords. So if you're, if you're say, um, uh, you know, going to work on the left version. Those are all the chords, and then the center version would be. And 
and the right version. All right, so we're gonna, uh, I guess we're gonna stop there. Um, I thought maybe um, we would go on longer, but um, that lays out um, two major things for you to know about. One, again, are the inversions. So with, um, with the C major chord, the inversion, um, that's root position, meaning the root is on the bottom. That's first inversion here, meaning the, uh, the root is the, uh, the third in the chord. And this is second inversion, meaning the root is the fifth in the chord. I mean, the, uh, the bottom note is the fifth in the chord. And the minors have the inversion too. So C minor inversions would be, that's the, the, um, the uh, uh, C uh, minor reposition, C minor first inversion, C minor second inversion. And then we we went over looking uh, the pa uh, looking at the instrument as three different pathways depending on where you are, either to the left, center, or to the right. And um, you can um, begin to practice those. What I would do in the intervening time between now and the next session is just get used to the scale. Sort of practice um, practice one um, octave versions of these scales. And then try um, stringing them together. So again, right, center, left, and then, and that should be enough for this time. But this is, um, again, this is a kind of a, a lot of information to get under your fingers. So um, work with it slowly. You may decide that, you know, you, you, you want to, you know, you may decide to approach this topic, this, um, this video sort of as a standalone and continue working with maybe just the right, uh, sort of pathway that we had been, uh, that, that our box had been previously and, um, and only, you know, slowly begin to, um, bring in the other two pathways, or you can begin to, you can, you can just start practicing all three pathways, um, at once, uh, during, you know, uh, you know, get used to doing them all, uh, short, it depends where you're at on your journey. But anyway, again, this is a lot of information, um, and take it in slowly. Um, and, uh, again, when you're playing these scales, sing the scales, uh, whatever position you're doing it in. Dun, 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 dun. Um, and we'll uh, we'll uh, do a lot more in the next uh, in the next few uh, uh, videos, but this is quite a bit to get you going. All right. Well, thanks for following along. I'll uh, see you next time.